very sick. Um, I'm, you're going to have a hard time probably hearing me. I've been losing my voice, getting my voice back. I've been sick for a good almost a week and a half now. Um, but I am in the process of baking cookies. So I thought maybe you may want to see me making some of my family favorites. Um, some of these are generational. Some of these were actually cookies that were handed down from my great-great-grandmother. And um, I do try to make them every year. I don't always get to take, take the time to, to do them. Um, I have been doing um, a little bit at a time. I did one, two batches the other day. So this is my setup. This is actually a fabric table that I use in my kitchen and it folds down and it's really huge. So I excuse the mess. My house is always a wreck so I apologize and especially with me not feeling well, needless to say it really wasn't getting done. So as of right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to maneuver the camera so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing so you won't be looking at my butt um, so stay tuned and I'm going to move you guys around. Alright, we're at a different angle so hopefully I'm going to try and maneuver this so you don't have issues with seeing this. Um, so I'm going to be making my grandmother Nardino's snowdrops are basically like me Mexican wedding cookies. It's two and a quarter cups of sifted flour, a quarter, a a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, one cup of butter or margarine, half a cup of sifted confectionery sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, three quarters of a cup of chopped walnuts, and then on the side you'll need a half a cup of confectionery sugar to roll the cookies in. Let's see, so we need two and a quarter cups. Okay, so I have the salt and I have the flour in here, and this is my grandmother's sifter. So what I'm going to do is sift this into a separate bowl. I tend to do this. Okay, so that is the dry ingredients. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cream the butter and then add in a half a cup of sugar and the vanilla extract, blend, and then we're going to add in the dry ingredients and the nuts. So when you come back, everything will be mixed together, and I'll show you what the dough looks like. All right, so I mixed the dough. So I'm going to give you a, a good look. And it's not supposed to be a really wet dough. It's supposed to be somewhat dry. So now what I have to do is roll this into a flat bowl, and I have to chill this. Um, usually I put it at least in the refrigerator until I make a f another full batch of cookies. So I'm going to take <laughs> some saran wrap, and I'm going to form this into a dough. As the nuts go all over the place. Now, if have any nut allergies and let's say you're not going to want to make this because the whole point of this dough is the walnuts so this is a cookie that if you cannot eat nuts my suggestion is just don't make them all right so I'm going to get that together and we will start working on the next batch of cookies and we will return shortly all righty so now we are back to the snowdrops, which were my grandmother Nardino's um, recipe. These are actually Mexican um, snow, uh, Mexican tea wedding cakes, I think they're called. So this is the dough. After you take it out of the refrigerator, it is very nice and sturdy. So now basically all I have to do is, is cut these into about like one inch pieces. And then what you're going to do is you're going to roll them in your hand. And then you're basically, if I remember right, <clears throat> you put your oven on at 400 and then you just roll them into balls, place them about an inch 
apart on the ungreased cookie sheet and then you're going to bake anywhere from 10 to 12 minutes and one thing i will tell you is always start at the lowest amount that they tell you because you don't want your cookies to um of course burn so and everybody's stove and oven is different so these will spread a little bit they don't spread a lot but once you actually finish the baking process then what you're going to do is you're going to roll the cookies not when they're real hot because it'll just melt but just as they're just starting to get a little bit less hot so like when they're just about lukewarm you actually want to roll the cookie in confectionery sugar and you can actually roll them what I usually do is I usually do them twice but I'll show you that when we get to it all I'm doing here is just like I said rolling the dough and if you see that the, the dough is getting too soft put it back in the refrigerator wrap it back in the saran wrap and put it back in only because you really need it to be firm to roll it you don't want to be rolling a dough that is too soft so I'm going to continue doing this and I will show you the next step which will be taking them out of the oven and starting to roll them in the confectionery sugar all right so stay tuned okay so my mother-in-law had called so well my husband was talking to her um, I did the first set of powdered sugar on the cookies because I had to do them when they were warm so I'm going to sit down here and basically all you're going to do is take them I, like I said I do them twice so when they're warm you do it the first time and then you're going to put it through again and put more powdered sugar on them that'll coat them really really good because <coughs> of course what's going to happen is you're going to lose some of it of course with you know if you're giving them as gifts a lot of the powdered sugar will fall off that's why I always do them twice because you want to make sure that you have it when they're nice and warm because it sticks and adheres to them really really well and then the other coating, because it's still a little bit sticky, it'll actually make them actually look like snowballs. Hence the name my grandmother called them snowballs. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm gonna do, hopefully I won't start to cough. If I do, I won't put you through that. I'll shut the video off, but so I figured maybe we could sit and chat. So do any of you bake for the holidays? If so, what do you bake? Are they family traditional cookies or are they just basic cookies? Um, do you have memories of baking with your family like I do? My growing up, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. And my, who was it? My, my great grandfather. No, my grandfather, who I never really knew on my father's side, he was actually a baker. That was his profession. And my father, <laughs> funny enough, he always says to me that he thinks I got my, my baking abilities from my grandfather. But my father also too, I'm sorry, my throat is starting to hurt. <clears throat> my father did um, work for Nabisco cookies for a good number of years. And then we had actually moved to Pennsylvania, to Lytton, Pennsylvania. And my father was the manuer, manu, manager of research and development for Wilbur Chocolate in Lytton, Pennsylvania. So he had worked there for a couple of years. So he lived in 
with it, Pennsylvania, which is in Lancaster County. And uh, some of the best times, I think, were back in Pennsylvania. We were there alone, but this is a beautiful area. And if I, I always say to this day, if I had been older, I would have stayed. I don't think I would have come back to New Jersey like we had to. Um, my father even still to this day says he thinks that they made a mistake where instead of running back to New Jersey, we should have just stuck it out and stayed in Pennsylvania. And he thought of maybe he should have gone to maybe Hershey to try to work. But um, yeah, my father worked for Nabisco. So he did research and development and created, you know, a couple of cookie recipes and stuff for Nabisco way back when. Also, too, when he worked at um, Wilbur Chocolate, he had done the Muhammad Ali bar. I have the wrapper, and he met Muhammad Ali, and it was like a peanut butter crisp, so it had like the um, Rice crispy treat, like the Rice crispy cereal, in with the peanut butter bar. Um, but it was named the Muhammad Ali bar. And let's see. So most of my baking I remember doing with my grandmother, my mother's mother. We would get together at my grandmother's apartment and we would have everything laid out. And depending upon what age you were, um, you know, certain people did certain things, and, you know, when I was younger, you know, it's like in any family, they don't trust you to do certain things, like, oh, you could just do this, and, you know, so you eventually, gradually started doing more, but, um, yeah, I have a lot of good memories. So, I would love to hear about your memories things you've done with your family, if, if you bake, if that was a holiday tradition for you. Um, I'm going to put these into the pan because they are now done. And these are totally completed. So the next cookies we will be doing, I think, will be thumbprint cookies. So stay tuned and we will see what video we come up with next. I hope everybody has a good day and I will see you on the next video. Have a good one.